there are powers on Earth too hidden to be seen, and conspiracies too vast to comprehend. For years, the world has seen fact distorted, reality manipulated, and the truth concealed. Join the Pierre Sebac Podcast to uncover the real meanings behind ancient aliens and their symbolism. Hi, this is Pierre Sabac on Locking the Keys to the Mysteries. Uh, now today I want to talk about the soul pattern. I have made reference to the soul pattern in a couple of my videos, but I really wanted to try and um, offer further deconstruction regarding what I actually mean regarding the soul pattern. Now the soul pattern goes back into Gnostic philosophy and it's a very old and a very ancient idea and the soul pattern uh, really denotes spiritual knowledge which is uh, facilitated through remembrance or gnosis. Now gnosis at one level can be understood to be enlightenment. It is really um, knowledge um, which is appertaining to the soul and it's a revelation which uh, arises from the understanding of the absolute. Now the absolute is symbolized within um, Pythagorean symbolism as the Pythagorean monochord. Now the Pythagorean monochord encodes multiple realities. So for example we have um, one single string and this single string interpenetrates multiple realities. Now according to Pythagoras the multiple notes uh, represented multiple dimensions. So uh, different dimensions can be represented as a vibrating string. Now according to Pythagoras um, the slow vibration of the lowest notes is physical reality and then the highest um, or the quickest vibration of a very quick string would be the spiritual realm and so therefore we have different notes which represents different dimensions. Now according to uh, Gnostic philosophy um, the soul pattern is really tied into memory or insight. In particular it's tied into the memory or insight into the self. Now the Arabic word nafs which means self is polymorphic it also means the soul. So therefore within Gnostic philosophy uh, to know yourself is to know yourself. And this is going back to remembrance, in particular the remembrance of past lives in which uh, the talisman or the symbol is used in order to um, ignite memory, in order to remember oneself. And it's important in order to be remember who and what one is because this is at the basis of controlling one's self, um, soul pattern which is the basis of reincarnation. And this really is the conquest of death uh, which is the realization of the illusion but in particular um, the ability to control this illusion through incarnation. Now um, this is metaphysical. Um, the uh, realization of the soul pattern and the memory of the soul pattern, the memory of past lives. Uh, and it really pertains to the enlightenment of the self. And the enlightenment of the self is achieved through the alignment of the soul pattern, which when we break it down within Gnostic symbolism is really the recollection. It is really breaking the amnesia, the amnesia of um, the soul. Um, and therefore drinking from the waters of memory. Drinking from the waters of memory therefore facilitates the control of the soul pattern and therefore um, the control over physical reality. Now it goes back within the mysteries to the process of um, initiation and initiation was really designed to um, negate forgetfulness and forgetfulness uh, within the mysteries is really a synonym for ignorance and this trait was attributed spiritually with death so therefore death is a synonym of ignorance which is equated with forgetfulness so therefore if one wants to uh, transcend death one therefore has to remember and this is going back to the soul pattern so at many levels we can say that the um, soul pattern and the um, memory regarding the soul pattern is transcendental 
and really it's the synchronization of the spirit in particular the synchronization of the spirit and its expression within the temporal realm um, which is directed through multiple incarnations which is the past and the future now these different realms are the spiritual realm which goes back into the Pythagorean monochord but essentially we're going back into um, um, the realm of um, universal forms so this is the implicit order which is manifested in the explicit order which is the particularized form so Plato talked about how there was these universal forms which are these ideas which are given um, physical reality or they are particularized and this is really at the basis of what we're talking about within the um, um, with the um, soul pattern this is the um, memory or the control over physical reality now this is why meditation is so important because the spiritual realm uh, is really the imaginal realm and really when you look at near-death experience you see uh, that near-death experience is very um, it's very much like an hallucination now we know it's not an hallucination and it's not a product of the dying brain and we know this for a fact because studies have been done into near-death experience with blind people these are people who have never seen before so they do not dream they do they have no idea uh, what physical reality looks like now in these studies it was shown um, and these studies were done by Professor Ring uh, that blind people that when they died uh, that a number of them could see and that they could see for the first time so we know therefore that near-death experience is not a type of hallucination but it goes back into the imaginal realm now the aborigines referred to this as the dream time and this is why it's very important within the mysteries to be able to meditate and to control these different realms because if one can lucid dream and one can tr control uh, the dream which is the imaginal realm which is the spiritual realm of the universal form which is the implicit order or the implicated order which then can be manifested um, as the particular order or it can be manifested as a particularized form this is the idea of Plato's um, forms of these universal forms which can be rendered physically so the dream is important in order to facilitate memory so if we want to conquer death we have to conquer the dream one of the processes of actually conquering um, death is by understanding the dream and being able to control the dream and by being able to control the dream as an extension one can control the imaginal realm so therefore one is able to control one's physical incarnation now this is important because when they looked at incarnation uh, they didn't look at the existence of time time does not exist within this realm so it is possible therefore for one to incarnate both into the past or into the future and the controlling of the dream facilitates the ability to control one's incarnation within the illusion of universal forms which are particularly um, as uh, an actual physical form again this would go back into the idea of the waveform um, the angels are said to be a holographic culture they are literally the masters of waveform the waveform is the spirit which is the vibration the logos spiritus is the breath but the vibration is then manifested or it vibrates into light light is the soul soul is related to the latin word soul which is the sun so the soul is light it's manifested as light which is a photo or a particle which gives birth to the physical world which is an hologram which is an illusionary now I know I'm using paradoxical language um, but scientifically uh, the the dichotomy between the waveform and how it's materialized through the observer is paradoxical so in essence the dream is very important it's at the basis of the transcendental um, tradition and it's important because it's at the basis of how one would synchronize the spirit in particular the spirits expression within the temporal order within um, within time and now this is directed through multiple incarnations uh, which are the past and the future and again because there are multiple realities this could be better versions of the future or, or better versions of the past or worse versions of the past and future now um, at many respects 
we can also say uh, that the soul pattern is based upon this pattern trajectory and this pattern trajectory is revealed through dreams and synchronicity and this is important so to control the dream is at the basis of controlling physical reality and it is at the basis of the paradigm now the paradigm is this patterned reality and it's the motion of the soul pattern and its mastery over reality and I will just want to um, quote um, from my book the soul pattern I haven't published it yet um, but I, I'm still in the process of writing but I make the following um, so I just want to quote from my book the soul pattern and I make the following observations the paradigm relates to paradigma which is the soul pattern from paradekunai shown beside or that which is figural metaphysical the paradigm connotes the soul and its existence on many dimensions exhibited primarily through levels of thought OK, so Logos is the thought or the word, which is the vibration, which manifests itself as the photon, which is light or the particle, again, which is as at the basis of physical or material reality. So um, it's existence on many dimensions exhibited primarily through levels of thought in a more lateral and truthful sense, the science systems or designs of God, a blueprint or force inherent in the anatomy of reality. The soul patterns manifestation reveals the divine paradigm, a type of patterned logic underlying the spirit of God and its creation. So therefore, uh, we can say, therefore, um, that uh, synchronicity is very important um, in terms of the soul pattern because the pattern of God is revealed through synchronicity, which is equated with the imaginal realm, which is essentially the spiritual realm of universal forms, which are materialized in the physical world as a particle. So this is the juxtaposition between the implicit order and its externalization of the explicit order. So, um, we can say, therefore, when we go back um, to the idea of the soul pattern, it is based upon this initiatory teaching. And the initiatory um, teachings all relate to how one would control the soul pattern, uh, which is, when we break it down, is tied into the belief of the unity of the one, or, in other words, uh, plurality from the one, the manifestation of uh, the divine spark but this manifestation of the divine spark or the anthropos is coming from this unity or one which is the aeon now the aeon is the source of the supreme mi mind which can be understood to be the logos literally this is the word or the spirit and the word of the spirit it's it's diffused into the world soul which is the manifestation of the spirit into archetypical forms so therefore the manifestation um, into um, vegetables, into different animals. These are all archetypical forms. The archetypical form is the universal pattern. This is the um, soul pattern of the universal form, which is then particularized um, as an actual form. So the archetypical form is this universal form. And Jung, when he came up with the idea of the archetype, he was basically translating the Greek word for the universal form. So this is not a new idea. Jung was was, um, very much aware of Plato's teaching on universal forms which is an archetypical form now the archetypical form is this emanation or the movement of the spirit and it appears according to the Gnostics as organic light the organic light is oneself which is the soul which is soul which is light and this is um, a, a photon and this light creates a, a pattern or a ripple uh, which is likened to a vibrating string, which is a ripple in time, which is the manifestation of the aeon. The word aeon uh, means an age because the aeon gives birth to time. So the aeon is um, a, a concentric circle, which is um, in Greek symbolism is equated with the emanation of the divine mind. But the concentric circle, when we look at this scientifically, is a hologram. It is an interference pattern, and the interference pattern is light, which gives form to the physical reality, gives form to the three-dimensional world. Now, this is coming from a single source, which is divine in origin. Now, again, when we go into the symbolism of light, it's very interesting, um, because um, they understood that at one level, if God if we look at the if we look at God, and by God I mean the absolute or the supreme, right? 
if movement is equated with decay and entropy, which is the physical order, then God is equated with non-movement and stillness. And so therefore, uh, light at one level was said not to move because it came from this divine source, which is stillness, which is everything but the, the everything is manifested in the physical world as this temporal order now the organic light can be understood as this pattern or ripple which is likened to a vibrating string and it's div divine in origin and it goes back to the symbolism of Pythag um, pythagoras's monochord as we said pythagoras's monochord is this vibrating string which represents the multiple worlds which are both spiritual and physical so these are multiple dimensions and they are symbolized as musical chords and the musical chords are a type of vibration or an aeon which are different ages um, which are um, symbolized as the manifestation of the ultimate mind now the aeon supports the visible and the invisible world so music is at the basis of reality which gives birth to the um, light and to the physical world now in this respect the universe which is the logos which is the one word universe is in a verse Gives birth, gives birth to the multiverse, which is the levels, different levels of existence, which can be understood to be different vibrations or notes on the Pythagorean monochord. And they are really synonymous with the formation of the Anthropos and is at the basis of the holographic universe. It's also at the basis of a holographic culture. Now, a holographic culture are a race of beings or beings who have deconstructed the physical parameters of reality. They have deconstructed the waveform. They know the difference between the waveform, which can be understood as the um, as the aeon or time or the spirit and the materialization of the spirit um, as the photon or particle which is the photon um, which is the difference between the imaginal realm or the implicit order of universal forms and the realization or the particularization of form which is um, which is Plato's platonic forms so uh, we can say therefore um, that um, that the soul pattern is at one level the projection of the spirit and its reflection into matter it can be understood to be a type of paradigm or a pattern and therefore synchronicity is important um, deconstruction of the imaginal realm which is the dream realm is at the basis of controlling physical reality which is at the basis of controlling physical incarnation the control over the soul pattern which was at the basis of gnosis uh, which is this knowledge of pneuma which is the spirit so it's um, the control over the hologram and the holographic um, culture or holographic beings understand this and therefore they have um, deconstructed not only have they deconstructed time and space and therefore um, they can um, time travel and therefore they can um, also make their flying saucers very small or very large because they control time and space. If you can control time, you can control physical space, the parameters of space. But they've also deconstructed the spiritual realm. And this is why these beings also inter intersect with the spiritual realm because they understand death. Once you can deconstruct um, the hologram and time and space, then that is at the, at the basis of deconstructing scientifically the spirit and the spirit and the imaginal realm which is at the basis of reality so a holographic culture therefore they are interdimensional they exist outside of time and they can control time and they have also deconstructed the soul pattern therefore within the apocrypha uh, the these beings are said to be able to plant souls into living bodies um, in today's parlance this would be a type of walking this idea uh, that a body can be controlled remotely um, by a remote intelligence again it's going back into the idea of the control of the soul pattern okay that's um, a basic summary of the soul pattern i haven't gone into too much etymology because I think the concepts themselves are difficult enough to to grasp without actually complicating it with multiple etymologies um, but that's essentially the soul pattern hope you've enjoyed the video um, please pass my videos around and if you have enjoyed my video um, please subscribe please support my work and buy my books a holographic culture the murder of reality uh, this is Pierre Sabak let's try and make this a better world thank you very much